You are five minutes away from your first wholesaling real estate deal. You are five minutes away from changing your entire life. You are five minutes away from having that 20, 25,000, 30,000, 40, heck, $50,000 check in your hand. Now, what is the difference between you and now in five minutes in the future? What I want you to really understand here is you are truly five minutes away from changing your life. Now, watching this video for five minutes and then doing something, I don't know what's going to change, but really what I want you to sh do today is learn from what I'm going to tell you about how you can start implementing actions. And within five minutes, starting right now, tomorrow, whenever you want to watch this video, start finding your first wholesaling real estate deal. Now, I don't know if you think this is clickbait or something, but it's not. Seriously, if you go out here and you dedicate five minutes, you can find your first wholesaling deal. I'm not going to say I can guarantee it, right? That's not a complete guarantee you're going to get your first deal in under five minutes, but you are five minutes away from doing it. And in my experience, over seven years of wholesaling real estate, it's happened for me. I started wholesaling, started calling five minutes, boom, first deal. Went out here, drank for hours, five minutes, found that deal. Now, obviously I put them in the list column, but like sometimes I spend five minutes putting bandit signs out that that's the deal right there. And so you are just five minutes away from changing your life. And that's really what I want to break down today. And that's really what I think everyone just needs to know today. And the cool part about this message is you can't complicate it, right? And so what are we talking about? You are five minutes away from your first deal. Okay. That is what I'm talking about. Your dreams will be achieved in five minutes to get your first wholesaling real estate deal. If you follow exactly what I'm going to say, it's going to be no fluff. I say this a million times and I know this is very cringy to say for some people because I say it so many stinking times, but I'm going to tell you not what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. And this is a key difference between, I think, every other real estate wholesaling guru uh, and YouTuber out here and then me. I'm just, I tell you like it is, I seven years in this game, thousands of wholesaling real estate deals. I know the difference in training hundreds of thousands of people to actually become successful in this business. I know it's going to keep you to get success and what's not going to lead you to success. And that's what I'm talking about today. I'm excited for it. I know your first deal is going to be here, but what specifically we're talking about today is getting your first deal with the minimum amount of time, with the maximum amount of action and effort, which will lead to your success. So if you truly believe you're five minutes away from your first deal or five minutes away from actually start, starting to take real action for success, guys, believe in yourself and you'll get there. So before I break it down, guys, you already know what to do. Make sure you actually go out here and smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, and always comment below your questions. You know, on these lives, we always do our one-on-ones. I got the link on the stream yard for everyone to hop on, have a conversation how I'm going to lead you to wholesaling real estate success. And truly, if you do not believe in the message I'm saying, or if you truly don't believe you have what it takes to become successful, you're already losing the game. You are already halfway down of just quitting this business. And that is a mindset you have to get rid of, right? You have to think like a champion. You have to think like a winner. Thinking like the winner is the first part of becoming the winner. And that's what we're talking about today. So let's let's get this going and let's talk about this. So the first thing we got to understand is getting that first wholesaling deal, right? I've talked about this a million times. You go to freewholesaling.com. You start watching the third day wholesaling challenge videos. You're going to start seeing a simple message of the people that are successful in wholesaling and the people that don't end up being successful in wholesaling. And what is one of the main differences I have personally found? It is just to stop overthinking things. Stop overcomplicating things. I get hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of DMs. If I look at all my YouTube comments and messages and, and, and all everywhere, if I even do wholesaling else is for real, it's insane. Uh, but thousands of people trying to talk to me or asking questions and, and things and getting the wholesaling. And it's always, what's the magic wand that can give me everything I ever wanted, right? All this money, all these wholesaling deals. And let me give you the the dang truth. I Everyone does not like it when I talk about this, but when it comes to making money in your first deal in wholesaling real estate, it's simplicity. It, it just, there's no overthinking it. There's no overcomplicating it. There's none of this stuff, right? And it's like a lot of people getting in the gym, right? You know, are you like, how, how do we get strong? It's like, just focus on lifting the weights. And then over some time, we can get a little crazier with it, right? But like, uh, us spending 45 minutes trying to do pen to paper, how to do the weights the right way, that ain't going to get us the strong way. You just got to do it, right? And what is that in wholesaling real estate, though, the weight analogy? The weight analogy is marketing, right? So 
Here, here's the basic thing. I always go, how much marketing should I do? Where should I do it? What should I do? All these different things. And here's the dang truth. More marketing equals more deals. Psh, mind blown, right? The craziest thing I've ever heard in my life. More marketing equals more deals. So basically what you got to understand here is how much marketing should I do as many as you can? The more people you get in contact with, the more people that know, hey, I'm looking to buy a couple of houses for cash. I'm not overthinking things. The more deals I'm going to get. Now, obviously, if I have the right list, right? So if I do five hours of probates, that's way more likely for me to get a deal than just spending five hours cold calling the vacant properties list. Now, the vacant properties list is great. Like I, I, I did not get an example of a bad list, but I'm telling you, like more marketing is more deals. And so if I do the vacant properties list for five hours, that's a good still, that's good marketing. And if I spent five hours doing physical for sale by owners, the vacant properties would be way better, right? Just better data. There's better chance. There's less competition, less saturation with that one. So yes, there, there is a difference between how good a list is and your success for it. But generally, right, we can get into like, oh, what's is squatting or lunges better for strength. And we can get in the, as long as you're exercising the legs and you're going hard, it's going to help you get stronger. Same thing in wholesaling, right? The, the more time you put into finding these sellers, the better chance you're going to get that deal, right? The more you care, the, the better, okay? And the one thing I can always say, and it's the funniest thing in the world, but just going out here and talking about wholesaling real estate and never doing it, it's never going to get you there. You got to go out here and do the action. And so sitting on your butt, I want you to understand this, sitting on your butt, does not make you any money. I want you to understand the sun your butt won't make you money. Okay. Scared money don't make money. Sitting on your butt all day, doing nothing and actually not doing the work that will not make you money. I, it's such a simple concept, but this is the biggest concept I can give to you that will make you a winner in wholesaling real estate versus a quitter. Are you getting out of your butt? You know, everyone thinks it's so funny on, on my live streams on the flip work channel. Like we, we do the, Get out of bed, right? I, I do the get out of bed, let's go. But like th there's a hidden meaning to that. Get out of bed, get off the couch, get off of whatever you're doing that's not making you money and start doing things that are actually going to make you money. You're going to see very slowly that once you start doing things that are going to make you more money, that actually gets you in front of the sellers and actually gets you in front of marketing versus getting the logo and the LLC perfectly, you're going to do way better. Sitting on the butt doesn't make you money. It, it won't. Here's another big thing, complaining. Complaining won't get you money. And oh, yeah, yeah, the guy does thousands of deals. You can go tell me not to complain and be the tough guy, right? I get it. But what I could tell you is on my rise to the top, I didn't complain. Uh, maybe I, 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 I shucked a little. I rolled my eyes. I, I rolled my eyes a lot, but I never complained. And the truth why I never complained was if I complained, that's going to be a negative mindset. If I started being like, oh, I'm feeling sorry for myself. Wholesaling sucks. I, I got no deals this month. I, I what am I am I gonna go wallow in, in my sorrow and cry in a ball if I didn't get a deal in a month? No, I just okay. Well, I need to go hard on the paint. That's how you do it. Like guys, you gotta think of the olden times, right? We're we're sitting really comfy. Most of us are sitting right here in air conditioning. Uh, we're on the internet right now. We got all this information. We we probably got a nice warm meal tonight, right? And I mean, maybe we're in our, our car, you know, and we're just enjoying the modern amenities of life, right? And, you know, we'll complain about the slightest inconvenience. Oh, my Starbucks order was, was I wait 30 minutes for it, right? Oh, complaining. And when, when our ancestors, and I want you to understand, if you're watching this video and you're a human being, four or 5,000 years ago, maybe seven, or, uh, let's call it 9,000 years ago, whatever, right? And uh, you think about your ancestors way back then. If they complain that they got no food today, you know, they didn't hunt, hunt the uh, buffalo or the saber tooth tiger. It's probably not the most scientific uh, correct term. Do, are we just going to cry about it or are we going to starve? Like, well, what are we going to do? Are, are, am I going to be a man or, or be the person of, of the family and go out here and actually stop complaining and start getting out there? Yeah, hey, we didn't get anything today. Are we going to sit around all day? Or are we just going to go back the next day and go even harder on the paint to go try to trying to find something to feed the family? It's not that dire. I'm just letting you know. But you got to think about that back then. Your ancestors, it's in your bloodline right now. Okay, In your bloodline. Okay? Uh, it's in your bloodline. No one quit. Because if they quit, <laughs> there ain't no grandkids. There ain't no great-grandkids. There ain't no you. 
So your ancestors never quitted when, you know, there was a bad winter and they needed to get some food. Because if they did quit, you'd never be here right now. You wouldn't be breathing air out of your lungs right now. You, you'd be toast. But your family never quitted back then. And they kept persevering thousands and thousands and thousands of years to make you. And you're going to go out here and complain that you didn't get a deal in a month. And you know in your heart you didn't try as, as hard as you should have. Shame on you. Seriously, shame on you. Guys, <laughs> life's tough. But if you can go out here and persevere, quit the excuses. And just be the man or woman you know you deserve to be. Your family deserves to be. Your ancestors looking at you know you deserve to be. You'll do well. And once you once you figure that out, a lot of a lot of stuff a lot of stuff changes in your mind. You start at taking actual action. And this comes back to my motto I've always said: but actions equal results. And you need to start thinking about yourself very, very, very deeply, and probably have some very difficult conversations with yourself. Am I doing the action that is equal to the results that I desire? And what do I mean by this? What is the result you desire? Looking at the title of this video, how to get your first deal. Okay, if I want to get my first deal, I got to do, I, that's the result I want. I've chosen that. Now, you only get to choose one, okay? It, when it comes to action equals results, you only get to choose one thing. And this is the most beautiful part of this, why I love it so much. If you choose you want to get your first deal, you have to do the action that is required to equal that result. It's a little math. I know it sucks, but if I, let's input my action. Oh, I talked to three sellers today and I'll talk to 20 sellers in a week. Does that equal first deal? Usually not, right? Probably got to 10X that. And so you start thinking about that. It's like, okay, what if I do 500 reverse drank for dollar stick notes in a month? That's an action that'll probably di dictate a ter 20, $30,000 wholesaling deal. And so if you want to do the action and somebody comes on here and complains to me, talk about complaining sometimes, Zach, I didn't get a deal. I've done everything. What's everything in your mind? Well, I did 30 sticky notes and I didn't get a deal this month. I'm like, let's plug in the act. 30 deals will, 30 sticky notes will not yield you a 40 grand. It took, if it took, it take me three hours, let's say at most do 30 sticky notes. I'd be making 40 grand every three hours. Was that 12 K an hour? Come on. I, of course, everyone would be doing it, right? That ain't the case. You gotta, it's a little more marketing than that, right? And so you look at actions versus results. It's such a simple equation, but no wholesaling guru, YouTuber, whatever, they'll never talk about it because you can't sell a course on it. It's just actual real life stuff you can implement in your business. If you want the result you require, a lot of people want to make 100K in, their year, in a year. I'm telling you, <laughs> you know, 50 sticky notes a week ain't going to get you 100k, right? Like you're going to you're going to up, up those numbers, probably double triple those if you really want to make six figures. But this comes back to the simple motto, more marketing is more deals. And this is the honest truth in this business. Now a lot of people get frustrated. A lot of people want to get the best thing possible or the the perfect thing that's going to lead to success and you just got to take action. And so let's talk about something else very important here. And when we're talking about you're five minutes away from a deal, I, I want to really hammer home one important thing. And we, we talk about the winners and losers in wholesaling. And this is what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about winners and losers. And I'm not saying this in an egotistical way. I'm not saying this in a derogatory way. But there is clearly two types of wholesalers out here. There are quitters and, and losers and there's winners. Now, a lot of people think uh, if I haven't got my first deal, I'm a loser. And I'm a quitter. Now, I just want everyone to understand. Winners, you don't have to get your first deal to still be a winner. You're a winner in training. Okay, so I guess we got a fourth. You're a winner or a winner in training or a loser or a quitter. Clearly, very big distinctions. A loser in wholesaling has lost the game. Wholesaling real estate is like the NBA. There's, there's a winner at the end of the game, and then there's a loser. Basketball does not end in a tie in the NBA. I love it, right? Same exact thing in wholesaling real estate. There's no ties, okay? But guess what? In wholesaling real estate, you haven't you haven't got your first deal. Is that do you? No, there's overtime, baby. There's overtime, and in the NBA, there could be a double overtime, a triple overtime, a four overtime, a five overtime, a six overtime, a seven. It goes for on and on until somebody wins. And that's the same thing for you in wholesaling real estate. So you're still oh, I'm a loser. Or not. You're not a loser. The game ain't over. The game ain't over. Okay. Game ain't over. You're just in overtime right now. You got to keep going. But 
the quitter, the loser that lost, will throw in the towel and say, I quit. Other team scores, they win the overtime. And so you got to understand, yeah, you're, you're not technically the winner because you haven't got your first deal, but you haven't lost. So what should you do? Keep playing the overtime. If you keep playing the overtime and you don't stop, you'll win. All right. So what's the difference? Quitters make excuses. That, that's a big thing I see with people that end up washing out. I see a lot of people wash out. I see a lot of come and do very well. When I deal with hundreds of thousands of y'all, I, it's a lot of people. Trust me, 100,000. Insane. There's some big distinctions I need you guys to understand. And once you're watching this, you got to understand that I'm actually going to become one of these things. Yeah, I'm pretty sure everyone watching this wants to become the winner. So let's kind of see the difference between the two. So we kind of can kind of act like them. You got to act like someone cool. You're probably going to end up being one of them if you do the right thing, right? So first and foremost, we got to understand this. Quitters make excuses. Are you a quitter? Do you make excuses? Well, if you don't want to be a quitter, don't make excuses. Winners get results. This is a big one. Winners always, always get results. Think of your ancestors. They always had food on the table. If there's not food on the table, you wouldn't be alive. You come from a 10,000-year-old bloodline of people that actually won. So it's in your blood. When is in your blood. It ain't new for you, okay? So get it going. So what's the difference between the losers and winners in wholesaling real estate, the, the quitters? What are the big difference, especially when it comes to getting your first deal? There are four main distinctions. And here's something that's... Uh, before getting these distinctions, I, I I want you guys to understand the similarities, right? And so this is a very fascinating quote. It's the same exact thing in wholesaling real estate. And I feel like I should know this. Everyone loves their superheroes. They love their heroes and villains and all these things. And everyone can name them off, right? But one fascinating thing you, you should understand is there are real life heroes and villains, right? There's evil people. And then there are amazing heroic people. We're not even talking about Superman or anything. Like, we're talking about legitimate heroes in the world and legitimate villains in this world, right? We, we know there are, right? What's the big difference between a hero and a villain? Everyone thinks, oh, they're uh, Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker are completely different. They're not even in the same realm of things, right? And you got to understand that no, they're actually the same dang person. You look at Spider-Man and the Green Goblin, they're the same exact person. Uh, no, everyone's like, they are so different. They're not even like, Spider-Man and the Green Goblin are the same exact thing to a point, to a T. And everyone argues me. What's up? You got to understand, losers and winners in wholesaling real estate, have they're pretty much 95% the same type of person. They're human beings. What's the similarities? Number one. They both go through massive struggle. Look at heroes and villains. They all go through a big struggle in their life. Winners and losers. They all go through wholesaling struggles. They all have to cold call. They all have to text blast. They all have to go through the beginner struggles and woes. What's MIO calculating? They both get cursed out over the phone. They both have to deal with that, right? Oh, I don't want to cold call. They both do that. Of course. They're, they're human beings. They both get super nervous to talk to sellers. They, I want you to understand, they both suck at talking to sellers starting out. The winner and loser in wholesaling real estate, they both are terrible starting out in wholesaling. Crazy, but they're a beginner. They're not that good. They're not an expert. Oh, duh. But what's, the, what, what's going on? Wait, wait, wait. They're both scared to start wholesaling. Of course, they're both scared to talk to motivated sellers. But what's the main difference? We talk about the hero and villain thing, right? That What's the biggest difference between hero and villain? They both go through struggle. They both go through so much anxiety and, and all this terrible stuff. But why does one become a hero and one become a villain? It's how they view it and how they actually take in that struggle and strife and what they actually do about it. Villains take struggle. The world's going against them. And they decide, you know what? The villain says, screw the world. I'm going to do terrible things to take revenge on all this bad stuff that happened to me. And then a hero will go out here and say, all this bad stuff happened to me. I'm going to make sure no one else has to ever go through this. And then they do a change in the world or they do something great, right? I always think about that, right? There's always vengeful people that bad injustice happens in the world and they decide to take everyone out with them. And there are other people that see the injustice and they say, hey, I'm going to make a change so I, so no one else has to go through what I went through, right? That's the biggest difference in my mind between a hero and a villain. Between a winner and a loser in wholesaling real estate, they both go through, go through struggle. But what they do with that struggle and strife is the big difference between when they actually end up becoming a winner in wholesaling real estate or a loser. The winner takes that challenge head on and consistently shows up every single day. What does the loser do? They quit. 
That's the difference. It, it, that's the, the divergent path between a successful wholesaler and a loser in this business. The biggest difference. Okay, so everyone goes through the same struggle, but you can either decide to quit or to keep going and see the real world. And the people that choose not to quit and keep going in the overtimes, even though they're tired, it's, it's quadruple overtime. They're sweating. They're thirsty. They're, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. But they keep going because it's not that they want to keep going because they, they obviously everyone would love to quit after they're tired, but they decide they need to keep going. And that's the biggest difference between people that are successful or not. And so once you understand that you'll do anything in your path to become successful, we understand now that we're only five minutes away from that success. And so the reason why I kind of went to that little tangent right there, first of all, to get you understanding that you are a winner and you come from winners. And if you want to become a winner, you cannot quit. And everyone wants to get the quick dopamine hit of five minute deal. I call my computer. I guarantee you a good deal. ain't going to work. Now, maybe you, you try this doesn't work. You got to keep going. And that is the point here. So you're seriously, guys, you're five minutes away from your next wholesaling real estate deal. And the big question is, how do I get there? What do I do? How to become successful? Well, think about it. You are literally five minutes away from, right now from your courthouse. Go to your local courthouse, pull the liens, pull the code violations, pull the probates, start getting it, start texting them, start calling them, reverse trying files, whatever you're doing. But for most people, they're on their butts right now. And they're not getting to work. And if you know that if you just get off that, off your butt, and hey, am I doing something right now that's going to actively make me money or actively not make me money? Now, I'm not telling you if you work a full-time job, you work in that job, you should get off your butt and stop working. That's making you money. It's providing for your family. No shame in that. I completely get it. But if you're playing video games, you're watching Netflix, you're like, hey, I could just, I could spend that 45 minutes. I could probably go to the courthouse and pull some really good leads to start cold calling. Do it. Okay, your future self will thank you. You'll not be a quitter. You're five minutes away from the next forty thousand dollar deal, but just by cold calling the probates. How many cold, probates you cold called last week? Love to know, right? It's the, the the winners are getting out here. In your market, the ones that I got that forty thousand dollar deal this week in wholesaling real estate, they cold call the probates. And if you're saying to yourself right now, I didn't cold call the probates because uh, they said no, so I gave up. Well, the person that decided not to give up. They got the probate list. And guess what they do with that? They got a $40,000 wholesaling deal. The reason why they won, you didn't. Because they took action. Action equals results. And once you start understanding this concept that, hey, I should probably stop feeling sorry for myself. I mean, you think about this. The winner, right? The, the code violation, the code enforcement person says you cannot get the list. Just The, the, the quitter just gives up. But the winner says, okay, they said no. Well, I'm going to go the next day and keep trying. Boom. Oh, they gave me this law. Okay, well, I'm just going to give up. No, read the law and see. Oh, wait, that law actually is only for public officials. I could probably go around that law easy. Boom. Hey, okay. guys, if there's a will, there's a way. In all 50 states right now, in wholesaling, in all 50 states, you can wholesale real estate. Now, there may be some things you got to change. You go to freehealthing.com if you're a real estate wholesaling course. You can actually go there, learn how to do it, but you're five minutes away from it. You're five minutes away from success. There's nothing stopping you right now. You're five minutes away from cold calling the right for sale by owner person if you. Go to freelancing.com and learn. You're five minutes away from that next government lead list you can be calling right now from actually becoming successful. Now, the question you have to do yourself is, did I do everything in my possible mind to get a wholesaling deal this week? I, I would probably argue about 80% of people watching this did not do everything they possibly could. They slacked off a little. They, they, there's no shame in that, right? But if you want to be at where you, if you want to be where you deserve, you feel like you need to be in life, you got to do the work that comes from it, right? Guys, heck, you're five minutes away from one connection. Heck, you, you go in the comments here on, on this YouTube video. You're five minutes away from just having an awesome connection with somebody in your own market that'll land you a $15,000 JV deal. What we showed last week, a $35,000 JV deal, one connection, boom, 35 grand just made right there out of thin air. I didn't call the seller. I, did, I just found the buyer. And so the true, true thing you have to understand is you might be working harder, but are you working smarter? And I, I know we're talking about taking action, but like, let everyone know who you are in the comments. Hey, my name is Zach. I'm in South Florida market. If you're in these counties, love to work with you. I got plenty of buyers. I do a bunch of deals. Help me out. Or, hey, I need help selling this deal. Or, hey, I got buyers. If you need help with this, let's JV together. Be a man or woman of your word. Have a great reputation. Don't screw anybody. If you screw anybody, you're 
out of this flip uh community or the Zakin channel or whatever channel you're watching this on, you're out of it. But guys, you, you're five minutes away. Guys, remember when I said that, you know, you know, 400 years ago, people didn't have their nice AC. Uh, you know, we had to boil the water. Or you wouldn't live. You, you got a mosquito bite. You're done, right? You lived at the age of 22 wild west. We got phones right now. We can DM people and make $20,000 out of thin air from a JV deal. How crazy is that? How crazy is that? And you start thinking to yourself like, okay, how do I get there though? Let people know who you are. I got, I got a Facebook group. Got 102,000 people in it. Do you think one person out of 102,000 will be doing a deal with you? Or you could squeeze a $15,000 deal once a month out of it? Duh. Yeah, you can. Okay. It's a lot of people, a lot of deals for me doing JV deals. I know it's a lot. So guys, even if you do, I promise you, you guys do 1% of what I'm doing. You guys will do very, very well in your business. And so you just got to do the activities that will get you closer to making money. So think about this, do the activities that will get me closer to the finish line, not further or the same. We think about the finish line. What's the finish line? The finish line right now is your first deal. So do the activities that get you closer to that goal. Is me cold calling motivated sellers going to be closer to get my first deal? Yes. Me going out here and building connections with buyers going to be closer to my first deal? Yes. Going out here trying to build connections for a JV deal? Yes. It, it, am I spending five hours trying to do JV deals versus when I could just be cold calling a seller? Probably better cold call seller sometimes. But like, are you doing activities that are going to actively make you money or not make you money or keep you at the same level? Think about that for a second, right? A lot of wholesalers feel like, oh, I got to do a, a meeting with a realtor that has never done a wholesaling deal before. And they, they, they do what's really going to make you money. And so if I can leave you off of one thing, this is a really important part. But money comes to those who want it more. And you got to, I'm truly saying this in the craziest way possible. And I know it seems nuts to say it, but if you want it, you'll get rich in wholesaling. And I, I, you get everyone say, oh, I want it so bad, Zach. You tell me you want to get your first deal. But your action says otherwise. Truly the men and women out here that are going to get their first deal, they want it. And maybe you want to make 100K just as much as the next guy. But the people that truly need to make the money more, that want to truly make the change in their life, sick of that nine to five job, sick of never making the rent, sick of never getting where they need to be financially. They'll actually take their butt out of action because they're so sick of where they're at right now. They want it, they need it, and they're going to go do it. But the people that say they want it bad and don't do the action, you truly didn't want it. The people that want it and go out there and actually take the action that leads them to the results, they will go out here and become successful in wholesaling real estate. So you got you to want it, guys. If you don't want it, money won't follow you. Money flows to the person that wants it more. Wholesaling deals flow to the person that needs to get that deal. And money will always flow to the person that cares the most about the seller. And if you care about the seller, you care about getting deals and you care about making a ton of money in wholesaling real estate, you're at the right place right here. So guys, go to freehostling.com. It's my free real estate wholesaling course where I'll teach you everything you know about wholesaling real estate absolutely for free. And if you have that want, that desire, that need to change your life, I have nothing to sell you at freehostling.com. It's a free wholesaling course. No credit cards, nothing. You go in there, you learn wholesaling real estate, get rich, and then boom, maybe send me some JV deals. Boom, you'll be good to go. So guys, go to freehostling.com. That's how you do it. So we are live on the Zatkin YouTube channel. You, you already know the vibes. I'm live here. I'm always live on here and every Sunday night. And I'm going to talk to you guys about getting rich in wholesaling real estate, helping you guys out. I'm obviously going to do my one-on-ones and get y'all butts into action. So if you're excited to become successful in wholesaling real estate, guys. Go to first and foremost, make sure you go to freelancing.com. We are on day 11 of the 30 day wholesaling challenge, and we'll be getting into it, guys. And the, the true point of this video that I've I did today, the, this live stream I'm doing, is I truly believe so many people want to make money in wholesaling. You know, we're, we're getting in day 11. This is when people start rolling their eyes. It gets a little tougher for everyone, right? We, we, we get a little tired, we get a little irritated. And we, we want to become successful, right? And this is really when rubber meets the road. I think day 15 is when it really gets crazy, right? We're halfway there. But if you truly want it, you're going to take the action. Day 11 is when the people that want it bad, but they're doing all the, 
the, you know, they're, they're studying, but they're not doing the work and ain't going to make them successful. So you guys are going to have to win it bad. If you want it bad, you will actually have whole thing success. Right. And so we see a lot of people out here, you know, they're going out here. They're, they're actually doing action. So shout out to Joseph. Anyone in JV happy to help. Joseph's out here in the Houston, Texas market. So I guess Joseph, I could, someone could DM him if they want to do a deal with him. I'm guessing maybe I'm doing it right, but like, I don't know, but at least he's making an effort to JV of someone, right? He's doing something. He's watching my amazing content, obviously, but he's doing it. All right. Just checking on the audio there, but he's making an effort for it. So uh, shout out to all these people. So if you want to do it, you can do it. AO Chronicles and Lynn Empire. Perfect. Boom. Right. Y'all are getting closer to that first deal. You guys go not it. Right. A lot of people know they're slacking a little, but if you know how to get off that slacking and actually become successful, you'll do well. So let's go here and uh, let's see what some, let's see what kind of questions we got. All right. Let's see what we got here. So let's see. Harry nut says weird name, but all right, fine. I think he caught me saying that name, but whatever. Uh, how many, how many run? Why do so many rundown houses have, have Rottweilers as pets? Um, I don't think you've been into enough rundown houses. Not every rundown house is a Rottweiler. Um, I don't know. I think that's kind of in your mind, but yeah, I, so if you ever see a dog, I mean, are you talking about inside the house or if you see a dog in, in like a fenced, you don't open the fence. Okay. Like not, I, I don't trust any wild dogs out here. Okay. Or, or dogs that like, I don't know. Just be careful. Let's see here. Let's shout out to candy. Candy's out here. She's doing some accountability, accountability post and wholesaling else is real. So shout out to you on here. But uh, yeah, let's see what we got. Harry says, uh, getting your first deal simple. Despite the frustrations, don't quit, period. No more discussions needed. Can I do a whole video on that? How to become successful? Consistently uh, go in here, take action, and video. I mean, I, I can do that all day, right? But I'm telling you, you have to go out here and do the work. So uh, sh shout out to Deborah. Deborah says, hi, Zach. Uh, why don't you talk about Long Island or New York, period, in any of your deals? Do you, you Rick, always uh, done deals out here? I've been watching your dad for a few weeks, always have a podcast on. So Deborah, the reason why I don't do New York is because New York uh, is because you're just statistically, when I go out here and I go after a market, I will probably do less deals in Long Island than I do in the Southeast. And there's very easy reasons for it. The Southeast is more wholesaling real estate friendly because prices are lower. There's more motivation from sellers. The people are generally nicer. No dig on New Yorkers, right? I mean, but like I, I'm just saying, the, the the main difference with Long Island is the Long Island has the has the uh, population that we all want for wholesaling, but it doesn't have the price. The prices are too high, and the higher the price in real estate, the lo the lower chance you have on someone taking a deep discount on the deal. And that's the the truth. Let's see. So Harry, my biggest issue is finding skip tracing companies. They all blow. So, dude. If you say every skip tracing company sucks, it's it's more of an indication on you. All right. A lot of people go out here and they'll say everything stinks, right? So like if you go out here and say every shoe company sucks, I tried Nike, I tried Adidas, I tried Reebok, I tried all these, I tried Sperry's, I tried flip-flops, I tried Crocs, every single shoe stinks. Maybe it's not that every single shoe stinks. Maybe you just don't know how to use shoes. Okay. I I I I don't get it, right? It just you have to understand that maybe you're just a picky eater. Not, not every single type of food sucks in the world. If you only eat chicken tenders and macaroni and cheese and everything else tastes terrible to you, it's not that you have an acquired taste buds. It's just you think everything sucks. Use right skip tracing. Batch, prop stream, go to use cheap little search. You got no money. I, mean, I don't know what to tell you, man. I, skip tracing, skip tracing. They take it from the credit bureau companies and that's it. They're all using the same guy and gals on companies on here. There ain't no something special from one skip tracing company than the other. You go on Fiverr, they go out here and they'll steal some uh, another wholesaler's list and then give it to you. Go out and do it. I'm just letting you know, it ain't going to make you the, the craziest success in the world. But saying everything else sucks here, that is one thing I let you know is we talked about. It's an excuse. Don't let the excuse go out here and stop you. Okay. It's a federal offense to put things on a male receptacle. Harry. 
bro, you, you're like, you're really close from getting uh, put on time out here, man. Harry, if you go to Frilson.com, you don't put sticky notes in a someone's mailbox. I said that very clearly. Put it on a door. Trying for dollars, you slap it on a door. It, it's kind of crazy that just go to Frilson.com. It's all there. Y- y'all need Frilson.com. Fabio says two deals on it in the works. Oh, all right. I like it. Awesome. Awesome. Let's see here. All right. This is how I know Harry's a troll. We got a troll in the chat. This is not live. LOL. This is not live. Bruh. Come on. This, this ain't live. I, 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 come on. This is ridiculous. I, I put time.gov and everything. We got, we got 10 41 PM. No, about to be 10 42 PM. So bleh, take that gurus. We got gurus in the chat every single day. So, all right, let's see what we got. Let's see what else we got. We're going to some one-on-ones too. Let's see. Let's do. All right. So, uh, Zixa says, when's the SMS video for the challenge? I'm not getting the exact day because we got to keep it, you know, keep it up in the air for y'all. Uh, but it is going to be, uh, next week. So starting Monday, tomorrow, that week, SMS video will drop for the 30 day wholesaling challenge. And all the replays will be in freewholesaling.com. So let's talk about this. Uh, let's get into it and uh, let's talk. So let's uh, do the one on one. So I got the link right here. Oh. All righty. All right. So uh, let's go here. All right. So I just posted streamer link right here. And so, uh, stream red links right here. You want to talk to me one-on-one for free. Always do that. Always help the people out. So, uh, first person we got here is going to be Artharva. What's up? Hey, can you hear me? Long clear. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? What's up? How can I help you out today? All right. So I've got a list of questions and then two role plays I want to try. All right, man. Let's see if you, uh, got better from last week. (laughs) All right. Sure. So, uh, first I know somewhere in your videos you said the ideal like calling time is two to seven and it doesn't matter that much. But honestly, nobody picks up my calls until like four thirty PM. So what would like an ideal like calling schedule or texting schedule day look like for me? Yeah. So first and foremost, that video I did say two to seven, but I did say in that video the prime prime times five to seven. That's where oh. you get the most pickup. So you are right. Here's the funny part. I figured that out by just doing it. And so you figure it out by doing it to that one, four 30. Okay. People actually start picking up a lot more. So four to seven is going to be the best for you. Technically I would say, I mean, five to seven is going to be the best, but, uh, I'd probably start doing four to seven. If you really want to get the best bang for your buck for time. Yeah. Um, I just so yeah. feel, I feel like I'm, I'm wasting my time. Cause I only cold call for three hours per day. And like the rest of the time, like I can only send like 20 messages a day or something. So what are like good, other good, like marketing channels I can expand to? Cause I can only send so many messages and call for so many hours. So, I mean, you can always expand, uh, your reverse drawing for dollars. You can expand JV. You can, there's a lot of things you can expand. Um, obviously it depends on your time, but I mean, I, it won't kill you, man, to just call two, three, or four, right? It ain't the best, but it could help. Uh, free options. I'm just telling you, cold calling is going to be the best for what you're personally trying to do. Um, you can add, I mean, obviously, you can, but once you get into the paid stuff, I mean, obviously, you can blow it up even more. But I think cold calling three hours a day, is, it's a good base to have, man. Um, you just get the right list. I don't think it's going to hurt you, dude. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, speaking of lists, uh, last time you told me like uh, liens, arrest records, probates, tired landlords, and evictions. So the county still hasn't sent me the evictions list. They said, or the arrest record. They say that'll take two to four weeks. Um, on so for tax liens, I got two leads from tax liens. I called the entire list for like the past, uh, I think it was two or three weeks. Uh, I check the probates list every day, and um, from the probates. So there's this guy, uh, he wants, he wants to sign on Monday, but the problem is like, he wants, I said, I I told him I was going to cover all the closing costs, like from the line, like, yeah, I'll cover all the closing costs. It'll be hassle free, all cash. But in the contract, he was like looking for where it says it'll be like, I'll pay all the closing costs. I was wondering if that's already included in the contract or if I have to draft it up. It'll be in there. Uh, I mean, we kind of make it vague on purpose. And then the title can really handle it, but you can just write 
like at the end of it, buyer agrees to pay all closing costs. The problem is what's closing. Here's the problem why we make it vague. What does all closing costs mean? Do I pay his taxes? Do I pay all the costs? To, then you get, you get into a slippery slope. So we, it's done purposely to be kind of a little vague because it can be negotiated. But on the closing cost section, you can just go out here and say, uh, buyer agrees to pay all closing costs uh, for title. I mean, you can make it general. The, the one thing about contracts you got to understand is it's very loosey goosey. Like it's co contracts aren't this crazy advanced system. You can write really whatever you want on a contract and then it's up to a judge to decide if it really gets crazy, but a title company should make sure it's all fine. Okay. So, um, is there a way I can, so I got this house for 90,000, the, the contract I was going to sign this, is there a way I can send you this address so you can just make sure I'm not like offering like way too much. Do you follow me on Facebook? I do. I'm in wholesaling houses for real. I don't think I follow you. Okay. So you can message me if you want. I can okay. look at it right now. Uh, sure. I'll pull up Facebook and do that real quick. All right. Uh, Tell me about the deal while you're doing it. Yeah, so it was on the probates list. Um, he said he was like selling with a realtor or somebody for like uh, 85000 I told him if I could offer him all cash, 90000 and take care of the closing costs, would he sign with me? He said yes. So uh, we're signing. I talked to him on Wednesday and we're signing today. Or sorry. Is Monday. it listed on the market? Uh, no, it is not. Okay. When you say listed, what do you mean by listed? Oh, it was like listed on the probates list. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, Did you figure out an MAO on it? Yeah, I I thought the MAO was like 130. I offered him 90. Uh, I'm not sure cuz he said his like the inside of the house needed tons of repairs. He said it would need around like $60,000 of repairs. I told him my partner said it would take like $80,000 of repairs. Okay, I'll send you the address. I followed you. Um does that mean I can just DM you now? I don't really use Facebook. These young kids, man, they got they know nothing <laughs> about Facebook. Yeah, just DM me. You're good. Okay. You're I just I just sent it through. All right. So what we got here. I mean, on like before I even look at it, I, I I always get the pretty much the same advice to anybody. If it seems decent, right? Like not terrible. I mean, I'm just going to send it to the buyer and see what they're going to say. Um, but we, we got to look here. Which Do you send a flip of the rick or Zach in? To Zach in. Okay, I see it right here. Okay. And so you're not going in person, right? This is going to be virtual? Yeah. Okay, so do you have that all squared up for a virtual closing? Uh, what do you mean? Like the sign? Like, first of all, do you have a title company already set out for this? Yeah, uh, it's like Capital Title of Texas. Okay, cool. Dude, this looks like a great deal, man. How many bedrooms? I have it written down. I'll pull it up. It is three bedrooms, two bathrooms. It's... Uh, la, 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 la. I don't hear the rest. Don't tell me the rest. Okay. <laughs> too many people watching this, okay? Okay. Okay, I just want to know. It's three bedroom. Three bedroom. What price again, you said? What what? What price? Ninety thousand. Yeah, that's a great deal. Hey, okay. I okay, just wanted to make sure I didn't sign on anything. It, it's it. a great deal. Um, I mean, I just, I just with this. I like to tell you, I'm not doing a full analysis for you, okay? Because I, I, if I, but like, what I'm letting you know is, any buyer would be stupid not to buy at that price. Because I'm seeing the four rents on three twos and looking at this construction on it, it's, it, it's an easy area that I'm used to. That was a good deal, man. I, I would. Get it locked up ASAP. Yeah, that's what I'm planning to do uh, tomorrow. So, and so I told you I was calling probates. This other probates lead I had, so he started talking to realtors like very, like right after we called or something. And the next day he told me he got like a, a higher offer by like 40,000 or something. I offered him like 150. Somebody else offered him like 190. And um, I'm not sure if I can offer him like high enough that he buys and low enough that I profit. So do you think I should just let it go or try to like convince him to buy with me even and let go of the lower, higher price? I'm not sure how I would do that though. Uh, I'm letting you know, th this is just from my experience. This is such an important thing, man. You, you got to understand 
just because somebody offers something higher doesn't mean they're going to go with that person. And in wholesaling real estate, and this took me a very long time to understand and painfully so, and this is something you need to put through in your head, man. You are never going to convince the seller to go with you. You're never going to convince them. You need to go with me. This is what? No, it's never that. They decide to go with you. All right. You're like, you're never going to go ask somebody out and you're going to convince them that you're such a great person, right? You don't, you can, you don't talk words and they like, oh, you sold me right No, It's by, it's how you are, how you act and how good of a person you are. Same exact thing in wholesaling real estate, right? We call them relationships uh, for like asking somebody out, but we also call it relationships, building a friendship and rapport with somebody. They're all relationships. Now there are different ways, right? But there are true relationships. Does somebody go out here and say, Arthur, you're going to be my friend because I'm a cool guy and you like me and I'm really funny. No. And then you say, yeah, I'm your friend now. It don't work like that. that's stupid, right? Yeah. You, you got to build that relationship as a friend, right? And so trust, respect, and hey, this person's confident and they're assertive, right? Same exact thing, man. You're never going to convince somebody. Now, there are some levels to convincing, I guess, to a point, but the one thing you're not going to beat is, is price. Guess what? If you're always the highest bid, you're never gonna you're never gonna be successful in wholesaling. You're gonna make two grand a deal. You do four four deals a year. It, it's gonna be terrible, man. So don't worry about it. Okay. Just hey, this is my price. Works for them. That's okay. But remember, this, see, this is kind of the selling part. If it doesn't work, I don't think I can be at that price. So I'm probably gonna have to be a little lower. Okay. And then that's how they kind of puts in the back of the head. Maybe that's selling. Eh, I'm not going to say that, but that's how I do it to become successful. Okay. Well, there's, okay. So on to the other leads I had. Um, so there's this like elderly couple that were super interested. We agreed on a price. We called, we were ready to sign, but then like the next day and the day after they just didn't pick up my calls. They didn't reply to my text. Is there like any other method I can reach out to them or what, what should yeah, I Yeah. We're going to do the thing that you don't know too well. I'm joking. Facebook. Oh, Facebook. <laughs> we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna DM people on Facebook, okay? Okay. Oh now, yeah. Talk about what 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 I want you to understand is I think you should get really comfortable with Facebook because Facebook ain't going anywhere. And that's where there's a, there's a lot of cash buyers on Facebook. And so I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be a great tool for you to find cash buyers. It's a great tool for me. Um it's a great tool to make money, man. I make millions of dollars off of Facebook. Facebook doesn't pay me, but I'm connected with people and they do JV deals with me. Facebook's a very powerful tool. You can make probably 50 grand this year with Facebook by just finding the right buyers and JVing. So it's a very powerful thing. And so I, I think I would, D, yeah, if, if no one's answering because it's virtual, I DM them. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll f try to find them on Facebook. Okay. Uh, let's go through my list. Don't find them. Okay. Uh, what's okay? So, what's like your average like callback rate for voicemail? I just do the hey, this is Atharva. Please give me a callback. Thank you. I mean, it's gonna be five to ten percent at most. I, I would say it's closer to five. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure my voicemails weren't like horrible because I was getting like, yeah, basically the same. Yeah, they're not that good. Also, I have the uh, two numbers. I got a Google Voice number in the Beaumont area code, and I have like my actual number is the Austin area code. Does it like really matter which number I use or? at all i mean i think the beaumont would definitely be better and you cannot have a very professional voicemail Arthalva, let me ask you a serious question if i called your personal phone number right now is it gonna be hey this is Arthalva. please give me a call back no it's gonna be the automated no because you're, you're 15 dude okay 15 year olds <laughs> don't do that that's like that's like old people stuff right <laughs> and because you're 15 old people mean what 30 right so <laughs> i'm just kidding i'm just busting your chops but like young guys don't have that your personal self but you need to have something professional right and so the Google voice would be good. You can have a nice voicemail that sounds professional and it's free. And so do it off your Google voice, man. Okay. I'll do that. Also, wh what are like the SMS contact rates through like a uh, Google voice looking like? Cause uh, I don't know if like, maybe these like by like these people just don't want to reply to me or if my messages aren't going through, but on average I'm getting like, like 8% of people texting back. I did the math. What's your script? 
Um, it's just the double whammy script. I just copied if it. If you're using the double whammy, you should be at 20. 20? Uh, maybe some. The problem is because you're using Google Voice, I can't tell if it didn't go through or not. Eight might be amazing for ones that go through because it actually might be a true 20. Uh, how many did you send out? I sent out, so I think it was like between 20 and 30. I think I sent out 24. Yeah, 24. Let's do this. Send, send 100 from your personal cell over a week and tell me what that response rate is. Uh, okay, sure. Well, and then uh, we can kind of see if it's Google Voice or you. Yeah, and on the uh, script, so it was since it's like, hey, this is Atharva from City, what city should I be putting there? Beaumont. Okay, hey, this is Atharva. We do deals, right? Yeah, okay. So on the water shutoff list, I called around 300 people, and I got like zero leads. Everybody who picked up said that they were renting it from some other person. I don't know if that was like a problem with the list. Like this, it was just super weird because they were all renting it from somebody. Has this like ever, like, have you ever heard of something like that? What list again? The water shutoff list. And where you get it from the utility department? Yeah. So when you get that list, you should be finding the owners and get their phone numbers from the property. It didn't come with a phone number, right? No, I skip traced it on batch leads. Did did do the actual owner's information it came back with that? Uh no, I just called the number it came back with and all literally every single person who picked up said that they were renting the house and that they did not own it. That's weird. Um I mean, I've tried a different list than that. The water shutoffs are usually pretty simple, man. Yeah. Because it'll say owner John Smith. One, two, three, Main Street. And so the skip tracing wouldn't even come back with a landlord because it's John Smith, the owner, not the land. Not John Smith, the owner, not the tenant. Okay, I'll go through it. Maybe I yeah. read it wrong or something. Okay. Uh, Make sure the mailing address is on there too. Because you should have the mailing address. It should be different. So. Okay. Make sure you did it the right way. Okay. So what is so since i called like uh five probates this week and out of five probates i got one lead so it was like probates have been the best list for me so far i've only called called like 20 Shocker. probates yeah <laughs> i only called like 15 20 people i got two or three leads so would it be like a smart idea to just do like probates but in a bunch of different counties no it's stick to one i mean you can be the probate king but you gotta stick to your market man because they're gonna you can be spread too thin with the uh, cash buyers. Okay. Uh, what about like I meant like just like in, in the Beaumont area, like there's Hardin County, Jefferson County. Yeah, I mean you can go around it as long if it's an area your buyers are good on, go do it. Okay, sounds good. Um. Okay, so yeah, remember the person I was talking about earlier, the one who we're gonna sign the address I sent you. Mm -hmm. So he said he since he was like under contract with somebody else. I'm not sure if like he am is? I like what are, we said, are we talking about that really good deal you sent me or the one where the person is giving you a higher offer? The uh one I sent you. That person's already under contract? He said he was like he signed a contract with somebody, so I asked him if he could still like uh sign with me if I offered him five grand higher, and he said sure. But I wasn't sure if that's what? like legal. Did that go over my head? Did I not listen that right? You you said that? Huh? Yeah, I, I can. I don't remember you. this, bro. I would never green light that. Yeah, I'm not sure if this is like. Let me know legal. in the chat if he said that because maybe I'm listening to things differently. Okay, so you're telling me the guy's already on con under contract. You offered five grand higher, so he is he is already under contract for eighty five right now. Yeah, bro, that's a terrible thing to do, man. He said he was like talking to some realtor or something like that. See, like I, I'm trying to understand. Is he under contract with a realtor to list the property or is he with somebody else to buy it and you're just going to offer five grand above that? I'm not sure. I didn't ask that many questions. So I, I, I can't help you because if it's somebody that's already under contract to buy it, then I, I, like, I ain't going to deal with it, right? And so if he has it listed with a realtor, you can kind of deal with it. But d does, he, does he have a contract with someone to sell the property? Uh, I just know that he's under contract for something. If you're giving me, 
if you're giving me vague information, I can give you vague answers. That, that's the issue. We got, we really got to get the information on this. If he okay. signed a purchase and sale agreement to buy some, he already made a commitment to, to sell his property for a certain price. You have to, if it gets out, it gets out, but you can't be the person going out here and trying to get the deal, steal someone's deal. I would not say that's the right thing to do. Okay. I'll talk to about him. I'll talk to him about that tomorrow. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would not steal someone's deal like that. It's yeah, that's why. That's why. Do. That's why I wanted to ask because he said he was okay with it. I just didn't want to like screw over a different wholesaler who's like also. Yeah, I wouldn't screw someone's deal up like that. Yeah. Okay. So also, there's like, so when I'm cold calling people and I like finish my part, I'm looking to buy some houses for cash. There was always this like awkward silence for like five seconds or something like that. And I know you re referenced Wolf of Wall Street. So what Jordan always does is he just sits in the silence and waits for them. But I always break it off. Should I just sit there and wait for them to say something? I always sit in the silence. Okay. Okay, I'll start doing the same thing. Uh, so when I'm JVing with somebody, how do I ensure that I like get my fifty like percent of it? What do I like? Do I? In the Are you doing JV deals right now? Oh uh, well, I was just talking to uh, Philip in the Streamlabs chat, and I tried talking to uh, somebody else. Uh, if you just... ensure you don't get screwed on a JV deal. Make sure you talk to the title company and you control and you make sure the title company has your agreement. Okay. So I was talking to like Joseph or somebody. I just like to uh, tell them to use my title company. You can, but if you let the title company know you're doing a JV and everything's like that, you should do it. Are you going to okay. bring the buyer or are you going to bring the deal? I'm going to bring the buyer. If you bring the buyer, make sure you use your title company. That okay. already knows you're a buyer. Sounds but if good. he already has a title company, you're going to have to call the title company and let them know you're JVing. The biggest way to get screwed on a deal is to be silent on the JV deal with the title company. Okay. Do you, oh, Speaking of title company, do you have like any experience with like the capital title of Texas or have you heard of them? Do you know? I've heard of them, them, but I mean, I, I, know, I haven't used them. Okay. So... Well, I might have used them, but I mean, it'd be from JVing. Okay. Um, also, the, now onto the, like, the two things I wanted to roleplay. The first is, like, I know you and Rick said to, like, check up after signing the contract and, like, stay on the line while, like, signing the contract. But can we try mm -hmm. that? Like, what am I, what, like, after I, we have signed the contract, what am I supposed to, like, call them back and say? Just, like, hi, how are you doing? Or after they signed? Yeah. Okay, I mean, first of all, Arthur, you need to go to freelancing.com, virtual wholesaling. We kind of talked about, I mean, heck, we had day three. We already talked about that. So you should do that before you, I mean, honestly, man, I, you should probably go through the thing before we, we do this, but when someone signs, Hey, great. Thank you so much for signing it. What we're going to do is we'll bring this to the title company. They're going to look it over and they'll probably give you a call back to get everything set up to see how you can get paid on this. One thing I just want to let you know is my partner might want to go by and see it probably next week or two. Just let me know how we can set that up. Just so we can see it's not going to change the price or anything. We just want to put eyes on it. Kind of get some quotes for what we're going to do with the property and make some decisions. Is that okay with you? Boom. Done. Okay. Should I be doing like follow-up calls like the next like five days after? Or or man. It's all in there. <laughs> okay. Yes. And then last thing, what are the types of lists I should be targeting for this week? Government lists, probates, and then any type of government list you can possibly get your hands on. Okay, all the government lists say they'll reach out to me in two to four weeks, two to four weeks. Uh, Fava, you know, you know, language is very important. You just told me all. Did you really mean that? All the ones I contacted. Thank you. So all the ones you didn't contact, you should do. Okay. For example, the arrest record list. Did you do that one? Yeah, I talked to them. You talked to them. What did they say? They said they'll email me back in two to four weeks. Do you know for your county, you can pull up the arrests pretty simple, right? You can get the public bookings, like, boom, it's Texas. Really? Go do that instead. I didn't know that. Okay. And it's, okay. You know, arrest records are the easiest ones to get, man. They post everyone's mugshot everywhere. Okay. I saw the last 24 hours list. I didn't see the whole thing. Okay. I'll look for that more on their What's website. What's the last 24 hours list? If you want, make sure they own real estate so we can do. Okay, so when they're in the jail, uh, actually, I'll just watch your arrest records video. Okay, sounds good. Um, yeah. So can we see like? Okay, never mind. You said it's on freewholesaling.com. Okay, so that's all I had. 
All right, go through it. Come back. Help you out, man. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. I right, appreciate it. Boom. Mir, what is up? Hey, man. Hope your Sunday is good. Always, man. What's up? How can I help you out? Uh, yeah, man. I called. Uh, I called the list that you you told me to call last week, and uh, I got one one potential potential lead. Okay. It was a lady who said she wants to sell, but but not now. She said she said she's waiting for the value of the property to go up. So probably by the end of the year. That's that's the best I got. She's gonna be disappointed. Yeah, that's... poor lady. Yeah. I I can send you the address. I, I no. unless they actually want to take an offer. What's the point? Yeah, I, I went through the MCTP uh, until I until I until I went over to the price and asked her, "Oh, what kind of price are you looking at?" She said, "Oh, um, I'm kind of waiting on that." until it goes up and then i'll let you know i was like okay you have my number anything you need i'm the, i'm your cash buyer she was she was like i built that rapport i built that relationship but she's waiting till the end of the year so that's let her do it you're never going to convince someone to sell the property they just got to yeah. be up for it or not yeah but um oh yeah other than that uh yeah she's no one no one else is answering so i had i had a question about the tax delinquent list i have it right in front of me mm -hmm. and um so it's it's basically Three columns, name, address, and then amount. Does the, I'm guessing, like logically, logically thinking about this, the higher the amount of the tax, the higher the motivation? No. No? Then... There's some people that aren't motivated. They're just behind on their taxes. And they, no. I don't want to sell right now. They're, they're in La La Land. I don't want to talk about it, right? I don't want to sell my house. And they just won't pay their taxes. Yeah. It's the motivation of why they're looking to sell it. Okay. Because be surprised. Like... Some people that just, they're off a of one payment, they're super motivated to get rid of the property. Once they're three or four years, they're kind of dug their heels into not paying. They don't care. Yeah. And I know in your mind, you're like, wh why would you not pay your property taxes in four years? You're going to get public record. You're going to get an auction. This is so stupid, right? I, I don't believe it either when I start out, but you look at the auctions, it happens all the stinking time. Yeah, because I'm looking at $20, $30, like... Like, shouldn't, shouldn't I be calling the thousands, you know? I mean, it should be at least 500. No, I'm looking at 75, 39. Yeah, I, I was think at least 500 same. bucks. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that's some cheap real estate. The problem is you're at like land because sometimes it's land. So you're probably not going to be the best one. Some so, people like disabled veterans. They get like 99% off their taxes and stuff. So like, yeah, maybe, but I do at least five hundred. So just call five hundred plus. Yeah. Okay. And then um, when I when I skip trace on uh, True People Search, it usually gives me like six numbers. Is it yeah. usually the first? Is it usually the first? All the number? mobiles usually. Huh? Mobiles. The wireless. Yeah. The wireless, wireless, whatever it's called. Yeah. Landlines are very rarely good at all. And then it's the most recent one, or. I mean, the the most top one's gonna be the best one. Yeah. I've personally always found. Yeah, I'm I'm just I just want to get the workflow like uh, set. So so it's like wireless on the top ones usually always gonna have the best connection rates. Yeah. And I want to know like when to move on because sometimes I'll, I'll be looking at a deal and be like, okay, this might be a good one, and I'll call all six. And I'm wondering if that's a waste of time, you know? I'll just do the wireless ones for now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, other than that, um, I'm not getting any answers. I don't know if it's I don't know if it's me. I don't know if it's the list. I don't know. If... Keep changing the lists. That's all I can tell you, man. Keep Change. trying the list. See what's sticking the best. Okay, and um, where you said evictions, I only did the tax delinquent. I, I don't. Uh, if, is are evictions the same as tired landlords on prop stream, or is it something else? From no, the it's completely different. Tired landlords are going to be on prop stream. Be someone that's owned a property for over five years. It's a rental property. They don't know if you evicted somebody or not. Okay. And then, how, uh, how can I, and then uh, how can I get the uh, evictions? Call the clerk of the court or you can pull up the court records and see which ones are evictions. Okay. If you can't find it, you're going to call them up and ask why or how to do it. Yeah. Private research. All right, man. And then should I call this lady again or no? Uh, call her in a month. In a month. Someone that says they do the price, give them a month and see what changes. And then I put them on a quarterly follow up on my podio. Okay. And then um, uh, I had I had a midterm last week. I have a final again this week. So after that, I'm 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 going like 
twenty four seven. Like all right, you said, after, man. You, you said four to seven p.m. Um, every day four to seven p.m. I'm I'm going Dude. crazy on it. I just need a memorial device. Like what kind of what other lists should I do? What do you I think? Do, we can go we can go forever on this. You already know that, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. I know. I mean, North Carolina. We we start. I would start doing the evictions. We can start going in the leans if we really want to go nuts. Always probates. Uh, but you've probably you've probably said me, heard me. I've said that a million times, though, right? Yeah. Um, probably the probates and four to seven. We could sprinkle. You're in Canada, though, right? Yeah. So, EST. I would say mm, I'm trying to think because you are doing the delinquencies right now so let's just do let's try all the liens let's do all the probates and let's do arrest records let's get a little crazy um if, if any of those require me to call them trust me i've called them a million times they're all like no no it's, it's against law it's against law for so the arrest records i don't know about arrest records but like utility probates does I've, anybody here in the chat or were you guys able to pull the probate to North Carolina? I could. This would be new to me. Is there, yeah, is there a law in North Carolina you can't pull the probates? I couldn't, man. I tried. So what do they specifically say to you? Um, I, can, I mean, I can look for it and pull it up, but like they, they basically quoted something like a law. Give me the quote. Uh, so and I, I, I can look for the quote, but on the phone, the, they said we can give you the the name of the person who died, but uh, we can't give you that address. That's fine. That's all I need. I can look up the name on the property appraiser. Done. Yeah. So if I go to Peter W. Vishnu and look their name up on the property appraiser, uh, something will pull up there. Yeah. Or, or says he pulls everything from North Carolina. Dude, all you need is a name, man. Yeah, or or I think they said like uh, uh you can you can uh, look for a name, but you can't request. I think they said something like that. Yeah, you can probably sure. look for it. Yeah, like 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 you can like you can uh like say oh I, I'm looking for this name, but I don't have any names to look for. You can go to the dockets, and the dockets are basically a, a court schedule of all the probates, and they'll say the estate of John Smith. And then they have a case number. And then you can go crazy on the guy and request all the case numbers if you want. But the court dockets, too, are going to have the, basically, this is on jury or whatever, courtroom 43, Judge Johnny Smithson. It's going to have the estate of, the estate of, the estate of, the estate of, the estate of. Dockets. Mm -hmm. Court new... dockets. English is my third language, man. This is a new word to me. Okay. Docket. That's it. <laughs> all right, man. All right, hey man, no, no, nothing else. Hopefully, I get over with this final exam. And, I'm All right, good school. luck, man. I can go hard. Nothing else. All right, boom. All right, next here we got Jose. Hey man, how are What's you up? doing? How are you? Doing good. Um, awesome, man. What's up? How can I help you out? All right, so man, I'm trying to convince my lawyer right now at the moment. I'm trying to teach him about wholesaling in general because I mean I've had so many lawyers in my city. Um, and like they have all, I had some no's and some confusion. So I actually feel like I can try to convince this seller or this um, lawyer to, I guess, use the contracts. Um, and I've actually, in the past, I've used them before. And we've, we, he has accepted the purchase and sales agreement that I've gotten from your, from free wholesaling or wholesaling for real. And so I know like, like, the, the, the main concern for him is that he thinks that I'm acting as a broker, which I've been explaining to him a lot that we're both focusing on two different markets. Yes, sir. Lawyer for your brokerage? Like, so, give me some more data. Give me some info. So she's the, the lawyer's a closing attorney. Okay. So you need exactly. to ask her this specific question. This is, this is going to change everything. Can I legally purchase real estate with this contract or can I not? Not that you feel like's the best, but will this be acceptable to close a piece of real estate? Yes or no? Okay. Yeah, they're going to say this. Yeah, you can buy a house with that, but I feel like it'd be better if you pay me $500 and I can write it up for you, Jose. 
I don't think it. I think it's the uh, assigning it that's give, giving him the. What state? Uh, Georgia. Okay, you should ask him what statute says assignment is brokering. Uh, I told him about the constitution, the contract clause, right, in the constitution and all that stuff. But he still is. Ask is me specifically, give me the code that says I can't assign contracts. Okay. Ask me. Say, mortgage. Do they assign mortgages all the time? Does debt get assigned? Yeah. You you can assign contracts all day. Where does it? Sh you're. Hey, ma'am, you're the lawyer here. If you say it's illegal and it's brokering, show me a law that says it is. If it isn't, then do you have any case law to prove that? Okay. You need to use a different title company. Yeah. So they're because just... they're giving you what they feel, yeah. not what's actually the law. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah that, that's, is, that's what I'm starting to see too. But like, getting... I, I, I personally feel that they should go out here and ban people from wearing neon green, all neon green outfits. But is it lawful to do it? Yeah. I don't feel like it should be of the law, but it is. You know, it's just stupid stuff. Do I feel like the, they should ban the New York Jets from being a football team? Yes, but they're going to legally let them be one. So, no, what I feel and what's legal is not the same, man. Okay. And so, okay. So, right now, or let's just say if someone has a real estate license now and they can, they can wholesale, right? Like we're still in, in Georgia. Georgia. You don't need a real estate license in Georgia. Okay, but let's just say if you got one, right? Um, mm -hmm. You still do it if your broker agrees to it, right? Yeah, but you can always get a new broker. Okay, and so let's say if I'm under a broker, and is it and when you when you're a real estate agent, you can't, um, I guess, sell properties without the permission of your broker, right? You gotta say this. If I buy my own personal house and I do it without off the market, do I have to pay a broker if I buy my own house? Uh, five, a three percent fee or whatever fee? No, because you're not you're not at, you're not brokering real estate. You're just buying it yourself. Okay. Well, if I assign a con, if I try to buy a house and assign it, then I'm not in your brokerage space for that, right? Okay. You, you gotta get very specific with it. Most brokers will say. If you're flipping houses, like if, yeah, if you list on the MLS and you use my brokerage, of course, but uh, if you're not, if you're doing this just by yourself to buy a house, you should be fine. Okay. Okay. I see what you're saying. Here's the thing with title companies and closing attorneys, you got to get someone that actually understands what you're talking about. So for example, am I going to use this closing attorney for an injury lawsuit? No, because that they, they don't understand it too well. Right. Yeah. They, they understand it, but they, they won't be like really good at it. I'm going to go to a closing attorney and say, hey, how many assignment of contracts have you closed? Oh, I've done like 200. Okay, I'll go with you. You actually know what you're thinking and doing. Boom. Okay. But back to the uh, real estate one, the real estate agent. So is there any way, because like, I'm trying to get my real estate license. I know I don't need it, but like, when, if I do get it, end up getting mm -hmm. it. And if I feel like the broker that I'm going to be under like, what if I have to be under that broker and I feel like she's going to probably charge me, um, she's probably going to charge me for any property that I, that I buy. It's a different broker, man. Yeah, but let's just say, you know, in this scenario, I have to be under her, right? And is she your mom? Is she your aunt? And yeah. Your wife? Like, what, what's, why what do you have, you don't have to use them. I, I know, but like, I got my license, right? And I got like two months left to take that one year exam that comes with it. And I'm just gonna you just be under her for a little bit, just so why, I can. Why is she paying for it? No, is but she I, dating you? Like I, I, why do you have to use this person? I mean, because it's just I, I feel like other brokers ain't gonna hire me if I'm just gonna be there for like two you, months. Any broker will take anyone they make money off, dude. Trust me, it's fine. But the thing is, I'm not gonna make money off 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 money with them. I'm not gonna be selling or anything. I'm just strictly gonna use it for the classes for the class the access to the class, and that's it. Dude, you use, use whoever you want, but th they're going to tell you what to do. Okay. I would use a broker that's not going to tell you what to do. Okay. All right. Sounds good. I um, mean, you got to talk to that broker because some brokers are going to be like, if you assign it, I want 25% of it. Because they're, they're your broker daddy. They do whatever you want. Whatever they want, they get. They're the boss. But you get to choose your boss. Oh, yeah. True, true. Okay. You and know why they're called brokers? Because they broke. broke. 
Yeah. I the broker you. than the agents, right? And so like yes. they're, they're going to want their money. Now you can find a broker that's actually not broke. They, yeah. They'd be okay with it. Okay. And okay. So there's this other, other uh, question. The I EXPs got. are good with it. The, um, I see a lot of people doing assignments with uh, keys, co not keys company. Um, K company, I think. There's there's ones that like they're kind of those like offshoot ones that are like you can kind of be like your own entrepreneur type person. They're usually pretty good with it. But if you use like the boutique pretty ones, they ain't gonna probably they're, they're, they're the ones that are gonna need some money. Okay. All right. That that was I mean, I just had one more random question that one one more question. Do you like if there's property that has high traffic, right? Um and like is there's a potential for billboards. My question is, do you know anyone like in Georgia that deals with billboards i mean you call the number it says billboards call here to do it billboards ain't going to work for wholesaling okay. you'll get deals from it but the amount of money you spend won't be comparatively be any even better you might get one deal dropping 20 grand on the billboard but you drop 20 grand in sms you could probably do 10 deals okay That's how gotcha. the name of the game works gotcha okay that, that was it man i appreciate right, you man dude get a broker that's okay with you wholesaling man I will for sure now. <laughs> All right. You, All right. you listen to me or are you going to suffer? I don't want you to suffer, man. Nah, I'm going to listen to you. I All mean, right, I'm, and, I really do need to get this done. <laughs> there's a lot of guys and gals wholesaling houses in Georgia, and it's all fine, man. All right? Okay. Don't appreciate worry about it. Get a lawyer that actually understands what they're talking about. Will do. All right. Thank See you, man. Boom. Guys, I, I've had lawyers tell me in Florida that whole you can't, you can't, it's not that you can't house sell. They feel like it's too close to brokering it, it, cause it's how I feel. It's not what the actual law is. Read the dang law in the country. You can wholesale houses, constitution clause. We're all protected here. So guys go out here, do the right thing. If you want to get your first deal, go to freehousing.com, a free real estate wholesaling course. I'll lead you to wholesaling success. Uh, tomorrow's day 12 of the 30 wholesaling challenge. So that's going to be fun guys. Hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys soon. This is Zach and signing out. Have a blessed.